Good evening, Achara. Good evening, sir. And she is Achara with a double N. That's not how my parents named me. I added the you added extra. Added okay. <laughs> so Jumanji or who, who told you to? Just some wins, some fancies. Okay. So yeah. has it worked? I'm here. You're here. Okay. Great. Where did you change it? Huh? When did you change it? About 15 years back. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So it's a pleasure to have you for the 89th episode of Jam with Sam. Thank you. So you're a national girl. Tell us a bit of your childhood. You also changed, I think, six schools in 12 years. Yes. The schooling you did. And one thing you did in school which resonates with you till today. Okay. I changed six schools in 12 years, not because I was a naughty kid. That's because my father was in the army and uh, I'm a typical army brat and we kept moving different cities. I probably um, spent only six months in a school also and before my father got posted out. So uh, upbringing has been amazing because I was always excited to move different places, make new friends. I think that came very naturally to all army, Air Force, Navy kids or uh, like that. My father, uh, actually I come from a three generation in the defense forces. Wow. So um, patriotism in, is in the blood. I'm claiming that as a privilege. Uh, but uh, that's how uh, interesting our uh, lives were which, because we kept moving. Um, yeah, six schools in 12 uh, years. I think what resonates with me as an army kid are a couple of things that I think works for all army kids is uh, adaptability, huge. We don't have a choice but to adapt to new uh, situations, new surroundings, new language, new culture, all of that. Uh, second is uh, detached attachment. Mm -hmm. Comes easily to us. Yeah. Uh, I think it really works. I can't say about others, uh, but it definitely works for me uh, in workplace and in personal life. And um, our third is networking. Mm -hmm. You go to a new school, you have to make friends. You, you don't have a choice. Yeah, alumni you must be having. Right? Yes, I have a friend in each city. Now oh. in other countries as well. Wow. So, okay. yeah, so it's interesting. You meet a bunch of people, you remain in touch, and um, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. So you moved to Kerala to do your BCom. Yes. Mar Evanios. Mar Evanios Mar College. Evanios. Okay, college. Tell us about this college and experiences. I didn't like Mari Vanyas at all. <laughs> I actually belong to Kerala, which is surprising because uh -huh. my parents both come from uh, Kerala, but I didn't enjoy. Um, and also because I don't speak the language, unfortunately, I don't speak my own mother tongue uh, as fluently. Uh, the cuss words, yes, I can, uh, but not uh, the regular uh, language. So then it became more challenging for me uh, to interact with people there. Okay, so same thing about me. I can't speak a bit of Tamil also. Okay. So next was Pune. Yes. Uh, you did your MBA from IIBM. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's the Pune University affiliated, okay. and uh, that was good fun. Hmm. Uh, I think uh, two years of Pune was amazing in terms of learning. Uh, it's true they don't teach much in B school. What hmm. you learn is what you learn uh, at work, and um, yeah. What did you major in? Marketing. Market. Okay. Okay. So we come to fun time. What ridiculous thing has someone tricked you into doing or believing? That they are in love with me? Oh gosh. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. Idli with ketchup maybe. <laughs> Idli with ketchup, okay. What is one question you can ask someone to find out the most about them? I think you shouldn't ask questions. I, should, I think you should very naturally create a safe space for them. Hmm. And they will tell you everything they want to about you, about yeah. themselves. Interesting. What's the most unusual but fun experience you've had? I got stranded in a very uh, small place called Kaad Godam. Uh, it's up north. Uttarakhand side and uh, I missed my train which was to go to Delhi. My mobile was off, it oh didn't God. work and uh, I landed in that uh, small town at 11 in the night. I ended up spending it at a stranger's house because there were no hotels that I could go to. So it was fun because I took a risk with staying with stranger I guess in a country like India. It's for you that's not something you want to venture out for. Uh, but I think it was very interesting. It was fun. Uh, they made me feel at home. I ended up taking a, um, a general compartment ticket to Delhi to reach and, okay. uh, um, and it was very fun and interesting. My parents don't agree, but I think it was fun, fun and interesting. Learning experience. Yes. Okay. I learned that people are good and uh, you just have to find those guardian angels when you really need them. Interesting. Okay, coming to your professional career, you started your career at Faber Castle. Yeah. 
What is your job? Like Kerber is in a pencil and pen. Yes. Okay. Most colorful uh, yeah. job to start off with, with crayons and uh, it's a German company into yeah. stationery. Hmm. Uh, six months into sales and marketing. Uh, that's what made me move from Pune to Bombay. Okay. Uh, it was called Bombay when I moved yes. here. So it's still Bombay. JB Nagar, I think they were, they were at JB Nagar or? Yes, yes. So for six, uh, six, seven months I did that. Uh, sales and marketing. I didn't enjoy sales. I can sell a story, I can't sell a crayon. <laughs> Uh, so that made me quit and then move okay. on to my next uh, job. You are in GTL? Yes. With GTL, uh, for others, is Global Telesystem. It's a network engineering company. Uh, and I did corporate communication. So I shifted from sales and marketing from you know, FNCG to uh, corporate communications with an IT and network engineering company, which was very interesting there. Uh, it was also famously infamous for the Harshad Mehta scam. Yes, yes. And I was doing reputation audit for them. Oh my God. So it was interesting. It okay. was interesting work. And what is uh, something innovative you did there? This is the same mobile tower business. No? Yes, okay. there's the towers and towers, stuff like okay. that. Um, innovative, I think they didn't have a uh, um, internal communication at all with the uh, okay. with the uh, employees. Uh, so a lot of work in that space. So then you switch gears totally, and you had a long stint and moved to CSR with HSBC. Yes. I mean, like a total yes. change. So just like you're changing schools, you're changing careers. I think. Yeah, I'm just reinventing. Okay. It's so the only thing one can do, you know, so I can't get bored. Um, I'm a true Sagittarian, I get bored very easily. <laughs> uh, we are a tribe. Absolutely. We are attracting absolutely. the tribe. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, that was interesting because then I moved to uh, doing corporate social responsibility, which actually is corporate sustainability for them. Hmm. The difference being that CSR is more to do with fundraising and uh, all of donor advised funds. Sustainability is more to do with good social work with the heart and the mind. Okay. So you make money out of it as well, ah. uh, which included things like microfinance, starting that for the, uh, for the bank. Hmm. Incubating that for the bank in 2006. 2006. Yeah, okay. and microfinance was not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's again was very interesting, hmm. um, uh, giving out uh, um, loans, loans uh, to uh, underprivileged people hmm. and all of that. So that was an interesting thing. Okay. We worked in the education and environment space. So I have gone into Borneo forest, doing climate change project and learning about sustainability logging and stuff to a village here in Raigad. Uh, digging trenches and doing water harvesting projects. So very, very different, different projects so that we ended up doing. So directly used to take a partner to do this project? No, HSBC always took partners to do because okay. we're still a guest in the country. country. Hmm. So you need to work with partners to get. Correct, uh, correct, correct. So eight years, eight long years, but very, very interesting profile, uh, very interesting people hmm. you know, that you worked with. Global projects, local projects, but uh, yeah. Fine. So, uh, you said CSR and corporate sustainability. So that is the same difference? Yes. So while CSR would probably be just cutting checks and giving it to NGOs and okay. work, okay. Uh, sustainability will be more towards doing those kind of work, but which gets money back into the bank. Ah, so if it's okay. microfinance loan, it's coming back. If okay. it's doing inclusive banking, which includes giving loans to agriculture and other uh, such um, field, then the money does come okay. back. So you're so loaning got, it out. Yeah, it's, got a, it's got a profitability in mind. Yes. A yes. So if it's microfinanced for self-help groups of uh, women hmm. in Raigad, um, uh, you know, with a particular NGO called Mandeshi, you should Google them. It's a very interesting organization which ran as a Mandeshi bank, which was bank for run by women, by women, okay. for women. And these are all uh, with no formal education. So you understand the Navari series? Hmm. Hmm. These, are, these are the women who run the bank. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, now coming to... Sorry, we started a B-school with them. You started a B-school with For them? For the women. Wow. And so, it's still there right now? Yes. Still there. So they are managing it? Yes. They are managing it. Okay. So coming to SN Foundation. Tell us the story. What is the concept? What is the idea behind SN Foundation? So I shift gears again. Yes. From uh, CSR in an MNC now to... Now you are in auto mode. No more gears. Like <laughs> automatic mode. So yeah, kind of. So uh, it's a not-for-profit. Uh, it started by uh, this person called uh, Harsh Mariwala, chairman of Marico Limited. Um, he's the 30th richest man in the country. This is his way of giving back to the ecosystem. I think what I admire him uh, as a philanthropist is he does not just believe in cutting checks and giving it to uh, schools and uh, hospitals, which is also important. Mm. I think he believes in creating ecosystems, which he supports not just with money, but with all his um, goodwill and with the connects that he has and grows them. Mm. And uh, that I think is uh, great for us. So what it typically does is it's a 
it's an ecosystem which gets all the entrepreneurs to come together and learn from each other in a more formal way. Um, it is meant for organizations of what we call growth ready. These are organizations which have made a certain cut, a uh, certain turnover, have been in existence for some year, but are ready to scale up to the next level. And these are the people that we take in, uh, it's a membership and all of that. Um, and then we help them to put them in the right group where they learn from each other okay. and scale up. But more importantly, enrich while you're scaling up. Hmm. It's not just the money that you're earning, but you're investing in yourself as an entrepreneur, build a lot of self-awareness as an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of times entrepreneurs are quite blindsided uh, in how they are functioning. Hmm. They don't necessarily do the self-awareness ar around whether they are mm, enablers to the organization or whether they are actually bottlenecks to the organization. So okay. we kind of trigger those blind spots on, in people all the time. Okay. So it's a kind of, how does a group operate? I mean, is it based right. on uh, each person has got a certain turnover or a certain mindset? How do those groups operate? Right. So uh, once they're selected, uh, they're put in small groups of what we call trust groups. Okay. Trust does not come easily to people, definitely not an entrepreneur. So we kind of build that in the group. If you're talking about a group, we're uh, talking about about 10 to 12 in a group of completely uh, um, non-competing business. Okay. Otherwise, there is no trust and there's no sharing. So it has to be completely non-competing. It has to be also on the same scale and stage of business. I wouldn't put a one crore with a 2000 crore because your challenges and experiences are Absolutely. completely different. Yes. So it has to be the same scale and stage of business. If you're talking about 10 in a group, five will be from manufacturing, five will be from service. Five will be from family managed, five will be from first generation. Okay. Uh, there will definitely uh, be somebody as young as 23 and as younger as a 60 year old. Mm. And we definitely, definitely try to put one woman entrepreneur in each group, mm. which is something that we struggle with. We are 500 entrepreneurs members and only 10% are women. women. And that's some, it's a real struggle. Uh, it's a personal cause to build that, but that's been a little struggle. But understand the diversity, irrespective of what, whether you're running manufacturing of steel, somebody's uh, uh, running of plastic, logistics, IT, digital marketing, you all come together and irrespective of whatever business you run, your challenges are very similar. Mm. And that's what gets discussed and it's out of experience. No Gyan Bazi okay. at all. Okay. There's plenty out there. So no, none of those completely experience sharing based. Okay. And a person has to pay a membership for this. How do you operate it? Yes. So we've just started that uh, where they pay uh, um, an annual fee of 10,000 uh, rupees, which gives them access to this curated group, which gives them access to all the programs that we have added beyond the group. These could be mentoring programs, academic partnerships that we have started, uh, fundraising programs, mm -hmm. which means we give them access to investors uh, and all the uh, knowledge sessions and events that we do throughout the year. Okay. So do you partner with other uh, net, uh, entrepreneurial groups like Thai or something to partner with them also? Yes, to reach out to the right ecosystem. Uh, and sometimes we've done some events which are knowledge based also okay, with them. Okay. I totally believe that the way forward is collaboration totally. and collaborating with competition is something that you really, really need to do. Yes. So you're only Mumbai based or is it across the country? It's always been a Mumbai based uh, chapter uh, with where we have taken people from Pune, Nasik, Nagpur because it's easier mm. for them to come in into Mumbai. We just started a chapter last uh, year, a year back actually in Chennai, mm. which also is very interesting because it allows us neighboring cities like Erod, mm. Puducherry, Mahabalipuram, Madurai, Coimbatore to come in also. So right now we have two chapters. But we've still taken people from, we just took somebody from Jaipur in today. Okay. So okay. the idea is that these are people who are really, really want to learn from other entrepreneurs and are ready to travel. All uh, the way here. Yes. For this meeting, which happens once in a month for three hours each. Okay. Right. So something about Harsh Mariwal and his zeal for excellence. I think nobody needs to go to a B school. He's a B school in itself, uh, you know, and uh, there are times when I am so taken back by how he is out of box thinking is uh, zeal of excellence is still yeah very much i think somewhere we're aligned on that i think he's very particular about time and i am and myself very time discipline uh, focus on work um, you know accountability all of that so some we're kind of aligned, aligned. to that okay so uh, he manages to work out every single day yes i always see him jogging on carter road Yes. So how does he manage that? I mean, running such a huge business. Yeah. How does he manage that? So I, this is something we have asked him as well as a team because he keeps telling, why aren't you guys exercising? Um, I think uh, he's very, very disciplined. More than anything else, what I've learned is very meticulous. Mm. So every moment of his life is like he's very planned. So if, it, if he says five meeting and if he's moving it, he'll move it to by 510. 
like like even the 10 minutes he will try to do something so yeah. even when he was setting up marico 40 years back uh, what i've heard from him is that he was very particular about leaving uh, leaving for home at five o'clock because he was very particular about time and how much time he's giving at work and how much time he's giving to himself and the family so uh, workout is very important mm -hmm. i've also heard from him that if he doesn't get to go to the gym every day or he walks in an airport for an hour and a half also if he's on a transit uh, thing so he's very very particular he says if you can get up and have a shower you can get up and go to the gym absolutely keith is nodding his head over okay <laughs> so a couple of controversial questions what double standard do you think is ridiculous and needs to be ended um, I think certain corporates sell diversity and inclusion as an agenda, which is very important, but unfortunately you never see it getting implemented. I still don't see transgenders being employed mm -hmm. in workspaces. I still don't see women on top as much. There are enough women and diversity is being done, but it's not at the top level. It's not at the board level. Um, so that's becoming, I think, uh, I think it's a... Okay. I think I I always had an all women's team. I've hired a guy and did reverse diversity. <laughs> okay. Why are there always more men in networking groups compared to women? Strangely, I have been asking that Strangely. myself for four and a half years. Standard. I think the way women look at networking, and I think the women in the room can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way the women look, I mean, the entrepreneur women is when I go to nine to five and do my job, I've done my bit. Hmm then for them a networking event and learning does not come very naturally okay. and god forbid if it happens in a time like this then in their heads and minds it's always a trade off right yeah. i go to my family spend the time with them otherwise i'll be guilted as a mother uh, or i go to this networking and learn you know and that kind of always is a dichotomy with them so uh, unfortunately that is what and i would believe that women are more natural networking, conversationalists yes. and networking absolutely, absolutely. and uh, they don't use it as much as they should right do all women networking groups make this been a plethora of women networking groups you know mommy groups is, do all networking women even rotary has started even bni started all women networking all women network do you think it makes better sense or there should be inclusivity of men also in the conversation? I think lots have been done for men, men for years. So if there's something being specially done for women, Doing? it's okay. okay. So um, while I don't, uh, I can't necessarily um, comment on the quality of conversation in these groups and all of that because mm. we have not done anything specific. Uh, we do specific things to get more women mm. to join us. I can't comment uh, about the mm. quality of discussion which happens there, but it's okay to have uh, more uh, women groups uh, like we have this ascent which says that only an entrepreneur can understand another entrepreneur exactly. hence groups like this there are times when a woman can only understand another woman's challenge and that's when groups like really, this is easier very, for them to very well answered. so the current economic state can it be improved everybody's talking about the slowdown and what's happening first improve the social situation of this country economic will fall in place okay, okay. we will leave it at that okay quick gun sam one witty answer What's the favorite thing in your closet right now? Skeletons. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Alcoholic or non-alcoholic beer? Wine. Wine? You prefer wine. So you also are getting non-alcoholic wine. It's becoming a rage in Who US. Who has them? Yeah, yeah, and why do they have them? It's in US, it's become a rage to have non-alcoholic drinks. So you have mojito without vodka, but it's vodka without the alcohol content. This is like mock meat all yeah, over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you had one super power, what would it be? Change the mindset of this country, country. Okay. leaders. So social media. So LinkedIn, you're quite active over there. I saw your profile is quite. Facebook is not been updated for quite some time. You're so much of a stalker, I must say. <laughs> I do my work. I do my work. Hashtag stalker alert. Stalker alert. <laughs> so uh, Twitter. Yeah. So which are the platforms you like? I think I go to LinkedIn for good content. Hmm. Facebook. Friends and families Family. you really mm. want to avoid mm. and uh, okay. I want to avoid, okay. you know, I don't want my relatives to know what I'm drinking, what I'm wearing and where I'm partying. Okay. Uh, so that's... Normally it's opposite, no? You want your friends and family to be part of the... Ah, okay, yeah. interesting. Mm. Okay. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn is where I think a uh, little bit. I've little just bit. managed to get in mm. uh, right now, but I, I prefer LinkedIn for good content. Okay. How does Ascend use digital media? Not as much, uh, which is what uh, we need to do more. Uh, while we've always been a peer learning platform where you learn from each other face to face and we believe in the vibe of the room. Hmm. So there are knowledge sessions that are like you vibing off each other, which is important, which cannot be done 
digitally uh, but we want to move into digital and try to give more content to people uh, we have 500 members mm. in our cohort if it will be um, it will be um, idiotic if i'm not able to connect all 500 because it's a community mm. that we are trying to build with uh, ascent so we want to go going forward we want to do that mm. this year we are focusing a lot on digital as even learning content for the uh, entrepreneurs which they what said they want to learn on digital transformation digital marketing mm. so we we are on that path this year good very good Hobbies and family. I'm not sure if this qualifies as a hobby, but every year I pick up uh, one uh, NGO that I want to work with, and oh. that includes visiting them oh. and all of that, and uh, trying to do a couple of things for them. So okay. whether it's finding funds, whether it's finding them connects, and whether it's solving the marketing challenge and all of that. So that very nice. Important. Something about your family. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, father was in the uh, army. I think uh, my first uh, sense of leadership and what I learned actually came from um, seeing my father, uh, how he handled troops. He is in a, uh, in a, in a, in infantry, which is your foot soldiers. Wow. So it's about motivating the soldiers all the time. So my first lesson from leadership actually comes from him. My first lesson from manager, act managing things comes from my mother okay. uh, and how to manage people, a great networker herself. Uh, so I think that's some uh, learning. Mother has always been a homemaker. Uh, she's moved where my father has moved or not moved to places where he was posted because you know we can't Correct. go. Correct. So that's that. And I have an elder brother working out of Dubai and I have a twin sister. Twin sister. You look alike? Thankfully, no. No? Okay. Good. Okay. What relaxes you? Uh, right now I've started trying yoga and meditation. Hmm. So while I keep telling the yoga teacher, calm me down, don't slow me down. Okay. Uh, that's what I want yoga for. I think somewhere I'm getting there. Okay. So it, it's uh, yoga and meditation yeah. right now. What's your name? Or uh, sorry, a lot of solo trips. Solo trips. Ah, yes, good. my whole uh, work life and personal life is chatting and yapping. So there are some times when I want to just take off and unfortunately or fortunately, I still make friends when I go there as well. Um, but Sagittarius, it's, no? that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. What's your next gear change? Um, it will be reinventing myself yet again. Uh, I don't know if it will be an entrepreneurial thing or another uh, uh, job, uh, but it will be completely different from what I'm yeah. doing right now. Fantastic. Achana, thank you so much for being on Jam with Sam. It was thank lovely you. interviewing you. Thank you so much. Thank you.